Express.js is pretty cool. Ever wanted to build an API with Express.js? Well, this video will teach you exactly that. So a while ago, a while he says, admittedly, too long. Nearly three years ago, I made a video series making a quiz app using AngularJS nearly three years ago, but there was no server involved. And the biggest request I got was how do I build all of this with a server? So this series is gonna build an API for that quiz app to consume. Now, if you haven't seen that quiz app tutorial, you don't need to know anything about it. If you wanna see a written version of this tutorial, there is a link in the description where I do a full crazy big write-up of all of these videos. But with that, let's jump in and build this API. In front of us, we see the terminal. So we'll just create a new directory and we'll call it Express Quiz API. CD into that directory. And now I just wanna initialize a package JSON. We'll just say yes to everything. And now we have this default package JSON here. Now we need to install some dependencies. So obviously we're going to need to install Express because that is what we're going to use to create the server. But I'm also going to require in another library called Nodemon. And Nodemon is a tool that we can use as a developer that just speeds up our workflow a little. So usually if we weren't using Nodemon, we would run the server by using just default node. So we would run node index.js, for example, and that would spin up the server all fine and good. But now what happens if we were to change the contents of index.js, we add some lines of code to our server. Node has no idea that we've made that change and the old version of the server is running, which isn't ideal. And that would mean that for us to reflect those new changes, we'd have to kill the server and then restart it manually. And that can take up a lot of time if we're doing that constantly throughout our development workflow. So instead, we use a tool called Nodemon and the server will run exactly the same as before. But this time, Nodemon is listening to the files. So if we make any changes to the code in our server, Nodemon will automatically reload the server for us. So the new version is reflected and the new version of the code is always the version that's running. So that just speeds up our workflow by not having to constantly kill and restart the server. So let's now install those. So I'll use yarn to add express and nodemon. So all yarn is, is just like NPM. It's personal preference, whether you use yarn or NPM, feel free to use NPM. I just prefer yarn. So there we go. We've now installed that. So now we can uh, open up the package JSON and I'm just gonna add in a little script here which is just a start script that will run um, Nodemon. So we'll just say Nodemon index.js. Add a comma there. So now we can run yarn start and it would run that Nodemon. But of course we don't have the index.js yet. So let's create that index.js. So now we need to scaffold out the base of our express app. So we'll do that initially by requiring express. We can do it like that. And then we can instantiate our application. So we'll say app. And to do that, all we need to do is run express. And that gives us all of the methods that express exposes to us. So that's things like get and post and listen. And these are all the methods that we need to have a basic server running. That get that I just mentioned, that's what we're gonna use first. So this is creating a root in our API that listens for get requests. So on the internet using HTTP, we have different forms of requests. So there's get requests, there's post requests, put requests, delete requests. So that's what HTTP is. HTTP can be thought of as the language of the internet. It's the way that we request and transfer data across the internet. HTTP stands for the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A protocol is just a set of rules. And Hypertext is the pages and the data that exist on the internet. So the Hypertext Transfer Protocol is just a set of rules that determines how we transfer pages and data across the internet. For our purposes, it will be used to retrieve data from our Express app, but it's also used for all sorts of other use cases all over the internet. Things like updating your user information or posting a tweet or deleting a photo from Facebook and things like that. To generalize, 
There are objects on the internet that you want to interact with, and there's actions that you're allowed to do to those objects. These objects that we speak about are usually represented on the internet as a URL. So here's an example of a URL that's an object that represents a user with a given ID on mywebsite.com. There may be many actions that you can perform on that same object. For example, you could simply fetch that user information, or you could try and update that user information, you could delete the user, or you could even try and create a brand new user, all using that same URL. To represent these different types of actions, or you could think of them as verbs or doing words, we have different types of requests with HTTP. Now we can rebuild those sentences that we saw before using this object and our new found knowledge of HTTP verbs or actions. So as you can see, when you represent it this way, we can say what we want to do in a way that's very close to an English sentence. So put simply, HTTP is a language that we use to tell the servers what we'd like to do and what objects we'd like to do it to. Please, can I delete this user? So what this line of code is doing is it's listening to get requests. So now we need to tell it where to listen. So we'll listen to the slash root, which is just the base of our API. But we could say slash test. So if you went to wherever our API is located, so myamazingapi.com slash test, you would reach this root. We're just gonna listen to slash. So now we need to tell it what to do when a request comes into that root. And we do that by giving it a callback function. So we'll give it a callback and it takes a request and a response as arguments. And we'll just use the arrow notation here. And then the simple hello world would just be to use the response object and send back hello world. If I could spell it right. So now every time a request comes in, a get request comes into this slash root, so the base of the API, it will just send back hello world. So now to complete our API scaffold, we now need to set the server up to listen to a port on the server. So we say app.listen, give it a port number, we'll just say 8080, and the second argument is an optional callback that will just run when the server is set up. So we'll just say app is listening on port 8080. So there we go. That is the base scaffold of an express app. So if we close out of Vim, so now we'll use that start script that we created earlier in the package JSON and just run yarn start. Of course, you could use npm here as well. npm start would do the same thing. And now we have our node mon running index.js app is listening on port 8080. So that's good. So now if we just navigate to the browser and we go to local localhost 8080 and we get hello world in the browser. So that's good. That's what we wanted. But if we go to another route, for example, like something random, cannot get slash SDF. That's because we haven't told Express what to do if that request comes in. We've only told it what to do for the base route. Everything else, it has no idea to do, what to do, so it'll just error out there. But here, we've told it to say, hello world. So if we come back to here, we'll just kill the server, and I'll just open up a new terminal window and run yarn start in there. So we've just got a server running constantly, and we'll come back into here, and I'll open up Vim again, and we can see the code. So another thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is serve the static files for the, the front end, the quiz app that we created. And we can do that in Express using another method called app.use. And what app.use allows us to do is run certain functionality every time a request comes in. So if we use app.use and we give it a function here, it'll run this function every single time a request comes in. But if we only want to run it on when it's on the test route, for example, we can just do test there, and then this will run it every time the test route is hit. But if we want to run it on every single route, we can just do that. But in this case, we want to serve static files. So we don't want to give it that. We'll give it an, a special function called express.static 
and then in here into express.static we give it the location of our static files so in this case i've got those files in a folder one one directory up called turtle fact quiz and now what will happen on here is when we navigate to a root it will see if that root matches anything in this static directory because we've got it before everything else and that's important here with express order matters so in this case we can say express.static and we will navigate back to the browser and i'll refresh and we get the quiz app loading here because the slash root of an api is assumed that you're requesting the index.html so in this case we've went to the slash root and in our code express.static has, has thought to itself oh you want the index html so that's what it's done it's just passed back the index html from this directory perfect but now this app.get which is also asking for the, the base of the api this code never ran and that's because order matters express has went down here and it's found something that fulfills the request and we haven't told it to continue we've told it to send a response to the client that's what express.static does just sends back that index html express assumes we're done here and it just sends that back and it stops with that request that request has been fulfilled and you're done so this will never run but if we take this app use and put it below here and go back to the browser and we refresh again we get our hello world and not the index html served because of the same phenomena express runs down from top to bottom it sees this app.get looking for the base root here and then it goes oh that's what the user wants sends back this and we're done because we've sent a response so that's quite interesting but i can hear you asking what if you want both of these to run in some way you want a cascade of events to happen to handle a certain request well you can do that so in this case we do want to serve this static html but we don't want to send anything back here because obviously sending something back in this one will mean that this never runs but let's say we want to log the request or we want to look something up in the database before we serve the index html or something like that we can comment out this res.send and here we'll just put in a comment that says like made it here just so that we know that this code actually executed but now we need to tell express we're not sending anything back but i want you to move on to the next request handler so in this case the next request handler would be this app use that's sending back that index so we can do that by using a third argument into this callback and that's a next function and all we need to do is call next so if we call next and we haven't actually sent anything back to the user express understands we want to move down to the next handler and let that do its thing and this is kind of the core idea behind express which is called middleware so middleware is all of these little chunks that happen from the start of the request all the way to the point the request is fulfilled we can pass that data through and by passing data through we can do different things in each part of the middleware without having this massive long handler function we can have all these modularized smaller middleware functions each of them that does a small little piece of functionality and passes it through to the next it's kind of like unix pipelines if you're aware of what that is but if you're not that's fine don't worry about that but it's just this idea that you can take small modular pieces of code that do a small piece of functionality extremely well and when you chain lots of those together you can start to build up more complex functionality so in this case we're running this get here and then we're calling next which is telling express move on and it moves on to serve this index html so if we save this go back to the browser and we refresh we get the index served again okay but if we go back into the the running server we can see made it here so that line of code actually ran so what we see here is that both of these chunks of code ran and we passed the data through it's exactly what we want so for now that's kind of a caveat 
we're not going to worry about that. We're going to put the, the app use up here and we'll say change this to a test route just so that we have another route there and we can just take a look at that quickly. So if we refresh here, we've got the index served. If we go to test, hello world, we go anywhere else, cannot get. So this is what we want to handle now. We don't want to have this cannot get whatever. We want to display a better 404 message that we can blanket handle all unknown requests on the server instead of giving this. So we'll go back to our server here. So now we can take the bits of information I've explained so far and sort of bring them together. So I've told you that app.use is a way of running a certain bit of code every time a request comes through. And I've said that the order matters, that it will cascade from top to bottom. And as soon as it finds something that fulfills the request, it's done and it won't cascade any further. So now let's say we get past the static. So there's no static files that match the request. And we get past this test get root and we're down here. There's nothing else to handle the request here. So that means it must be an unknown request, right? So here we could say app use. And instead of passing a root, we'll just pass it the handler. We'll just say, um, to give it the request and response object. And we just want to respond with a, a 404, an unknown request. So we can say response.status is 404 and dot send. And we'll just say unknown request quite simple. You can obviously get a lot more elaborate with this, but I hope that you can see the way that the cascading works here, that we're checking if there's any static information, any static documents to send back. If there isn't, then we check if this route matches. And if it doesn't, we go on to here and app use always runs. So if we get this far, this code will always run and we'll just send back a status 404 unknown request. And that works because of the nature of Express, stopping as soon as the request is fulfilled. So if we ever do reach this code, that means that it has to be an unknown request. So now we'll just test that out by coming here, refreshing this. So we got cannot get before, but now we get unknown request. And that'll be a 404 if we check the network tab. So I think that pretty well lays out the basis of what Express is, the way that Express works and the sort of fundamental ideas that are the cornerstone to building more complex Express apps. So in the next part, we'll start to create the actual routes that we want for our specific quiz API. But if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notifications of my new uploads. If you really like what I'm doing, you can check out my Patreon, but until that next video, stay hungry and keep coding.